It's YouTube Wednesday! Today I am making a mouse. Um, well, I'm going to show you how to make mice. There's a, a couple things that I'm using my pink glue sticks again. You can use regular glue sticks and paint them. I have a silpat, a couple sculpting tools, bowl of water, it's just some wire cutters to cut the, uh, the wire, some cotton balls, and then we're going to fur them two different ways, and I'll show you that when we get to it. But for now, I just want to cut a couple pieces of wire. Uh, I need to cut five pieces of wire. And I'm actually cutting four at about six inches. Uh, this spool of floral wire that I have, that's about two rolls around it. And I'm going to cut one long one that's going to be about 12 inches. And you'll see where I'm going here as soon as I start putting this little guy together. Okay, and that's my long piece of wire right there. All right, I don't ever use pliers or anything to get these together, but you can. Uh, I'm going to take about an inch and a half. From, my, from two of my six inch pieces and I'm just going to twist them together. Twisting them together all the way up. And I'm going to leave about that much of wire exposed. Maybe a half inch on each one. And I bend that that away. And I'm taking another piece of wire off of one of these I'm putting them together and I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing. Just going to twist it and twist it and twist it. I'm doing a, just a half twist every time. You might need a pair of pliers if you don't have eight hands like I do. And I'm going to take another one. See, and just one of those ends, once again, about an inch and a half down, I'm just going to start twisting it on and together. And these don't have to be perfect. Okay. And then that leaves me with these two that I will do the same thing with these two. Uh, I'm, I'm, like I said, I'm going to make a mouse or a rat. If you want to make a rat, you just go a little bit bigger. Um, but I like to go with a mouse in a smaller size because that's more realistic. I find with phobias, and if I pull a mouse out of my pocket, I'm really fishing for that phobia. That's what I'm really looking for. Um, or if I'm going to set decorate, I want them to look realistic. I don't want them to be 12 inch, you know, 12 inch tall rats. I want them to look realistic. Uh, I'm going to cut off my end. Uh, and you see I got, I got one longer than the other. And these are my mouse legs. That's what these are going to end up being. Uh, one's longer than the other. Who cares? I'm going to even that out just by folding it in and then back out. You know, I'm just kind of putting a little wire loop right there, which makes it just the same length as the rest of them. Okay, I'm going to get him down and fairly flat. Uh, this is my long piece of wire, and this is going to end up being my tail and my head, and it's going to go right here through the center. Uh, so I'm going to just put a loop in the end of it and twist the wire together. And now I have that, which I'm going to put on there, and I'm going to wrap that loop around here, so then it makes that crossbar the shoulders. If you can set it up so that you have, this is more of a rectangle than a square, that's great, because then you know where your shoulders are. And I'm going to wrap this once around here, so the tail can shoot out. I'm going to do it one more time up here 
just so I have a little more body and a little more structural support to my mouse. And when I'm rocking and rolling, I can whip out about 15, 20 of these mice in a night because you can see how easy this frame goes together. Okay, and I'm just pulling this loose. And there's no real secret here. I mean, it's just really I'm balling up and wrapping wire around until it looks mouse-like enough for me. I want it to look like a mouse that was hit by a car because it's really flat. Okay, and I want it to stay flat for just a little bit longer. Uh, I've got a real long tail on it. I'm going to shorten that tail to something a little more realistic. Once again, I'm going to flatten. I want this guy flat, flat, flat. So I want to see what's making him go up in the air and fix it. I'm on a sill pad, so the hot glue that I'm using won't stick to the sill pad. And it's not special hot glue, it just happens to be pink. You don't have to use pink, you can paint this afterwards. But I'm going to cover that wire that is his tail with hot glue. Cut off piece there. I have the Hops Wild Kingdom going on behind me. All right, now I'm going to do something a little bit stupid. Dip my hand in the bowl of water that I have here, and I'm going to use a wet. I'm going to wet this hot glue just a little bit to cool it down, just by dripping it on. You can use a spray bottle. And then I'm going to form that around the tail. So it's going to cover up that wire. Well, you can see I'm not burning myself. It doesn't hurt. I wet it a little bit to cool it down first. And then I just shape it with my fingers. Okay. Now I'm going to hit my legs some little bit of texture and color onto that wire okay I can now slide this a little bit aside So I have to work on a head for this mouse. Easiest way for me to do that is I'm using the hot glue gun. I'm going to shoot some hot glue into the water. I'm going to pick it up. In the water, it has cooled down. And I'm going to kind of make a ball out of it. I'm putting it into the water. And if I shoot it down there in a big blob, it's going to stay really hot. But if I shoot it out, then it won't. And basically, I'm making a wad of bubble gum that I can then shape into a little mouse head. All right, and that's just just a shape. Any weird lumpy bumpies are fine because they are there for texture. Um, I'll set my water aside for a second. I'm going to put on a blob there of the uh, glue. I'm going to get my fingers good and cold in the water. I'm going to pinch it. And after I pinch it, I can peel it off of my finger. And I have made a little mouse here on that side. And that, that's just a glob of glue. Cold fingers, cold fingers, let me say that again. I don't want hate mail because you burned yourself. I'm cooling my fingers in water while the glue is cooling on the ear. Okay. 
got it pinched. When I pinch it for a little bit, it comes off looking like that. And then I can simply curl it and shape it a little bit more to make it fairly mouse-like. Now, I also want to do just little slits for eyes. I have a candle and my metal stylus and a hand on my mouse head. I'm just using the candle to heat up the uh, stylus and I'm going to use it to carve just a couple details into my mouse head here to get it good and hot. I'm just going to lay it along this way to carve an eye. Get it hot again. And it's just a little slit eye. It's nothing special. Just a little slit eye. I'm going to get that candle out of the way. Now, I have my head and I have a wire loop that I'm going to attach it to. I'm going to peel up my mouse body and I'm going to move these arms back bring my candle back and I'm going to heat up that wire loop see how it's just pushing down in there now that just pushes right down in there. So I'll move that again. It's already hidden from view. Take my hot glue gun, run it around here, cover up anything else. I don't want to change the shape of the head because I like the shape of the head. I do want to use the cold water to form the glue around that loop and that is that's my little mouse corpse right there told you I had two ways to skin him uh, the first way is what I I have done on occasion and works great especially for bigger rats uh, this is a rabbit skin that you can buy from Tandy Leather or you can buy it from Hobby Lobby, but a lot of the hobby stores will have a rabbit skin where they have their leather stuff. Uh, it was $4.99. They're $3 at Tandy if, you have, if you're a member of their club. And it is as simple as laying it down. You don't want to cover up the tail, but you know, marking out where the body is. And then actually cotton makes up his tummy because they have white tummies. That's how easy it is to get him skinned with rabbit fur. I'm not going to use rabbit fur because that's not what I normally use. What I normally use is this stuff here. Dryer lint. It's already gray. It's already fuzzy. Um, this is from Haunt Laundry. So it's uh, especially special in the lint way. I'm going to get some hot glue on him. So then I simply lay this on. Lift this guy up. And you can kind of, I'm going to pull off some of this excess. It's just dryer lint, so you don't really need anything special to cut it or work with it. And I'm going to pinch it around the arms. I'm going to pinch it because that glue wrapped around, that glue wrapped around his neck. I'm just going to pinch it. I'm going to put a little bit more glue in where I need to. Need a little more glue here. A little more glue. I have a cotton round. I just take a cotton round. I have some spare hot glue that melted through. Put that guy in there. And I'm pulling off my excess. Let's 
a little bit of glue flashing. And now I'm just kind of going around and I'm pressing this down. And really the felting action of the dryer lint is going to really help make it stick. I have back my Silpat, um, have my hot glue gun again, and I'm just going to patch him up, all right? I think I need a little bit more on the head, so I'm taking a little bit that I pinched off, I'm going to push it on down and pull it away from my finger to expose his eyes, but that blends the head a little better, and now it's sticking out. A little more. Underneath here, I wouldn't mind a little more cotton going up onto his neck and throat. So I'm just going to tear up some of my cotton and put this on here. And if you just rub, you know, the cotton together a little bit, all the fibers bond and twist up together. And you can even figure out what you have to wash to get the perfect coloring of your mouse. I'm going to lay him down again. I'm going to do a little bit more work on these hands. Now I can shape this a little bit by cutting in my mouse features into here. You know, I can cut and get separate fingers from these little puddles that I've made. You know, that's kind of a, a good looking little mouse foot. It's fast, it's easy. You know, the more cotton you put on his belly, the uh, obviously the fatter he's going to be. Um, you know, you can put as much hair on him as you want. You have a lot of options with this little design of a mouse. I'm just kind of posing him now. But with that wire in there on those hands, he can grab stuff, move it around. Now I'm going to do a little bit of brown antique on him uh, just so I can pop the details of his eyes and inside of his ears. You know, make his hands stand out and really make him a, a dirty mouse, dirty rat. You dirty rat. And I'm just, you know, hitting him with this little bit of a brown wash. It's just, uh, I think this is some leather, dot, leather, antique leather stain and water, but acrylic paint and water will work just as fine. You might have to rinse it off a little bit better. This is a mouse that I've just made. Uh, if I wasn't doing it for the camera and I was making more than one, then uh, I could probably knock out 10, 15 a night, taking about 15 minutes. But he's fully posable. Uh, you can see the size that he is. I mean, he's a realistic size mouse. Uh, this is would he be him sitting on a set. I might put a little piece of cheese or something in there or a finger that he's holding. Uh, I'm going to repose him real quick so he's what he looks like coming out of my pocket.
here is how he would pull out of my pocket if I was going to use him as a roamer character at a haunt. And uh, because of scale, the matting of the fur, the gnarliness of the limbs, mm, it makes people run. You know, it's got that nice rigor mortis effect. So that's a dead mouse. Right there. Thanks for watching.